because those bond prices will increase. And so I think, you know, that'll be a great base for you that will provide some stability, plenty of income, but also some growth. And that's why I put 60 to 70 percent of bonds. And given the amount that you have with 70,000 total in that IRA, I'd probably use just some high quality bond mutual funds. Again, short group, shorter duration, high quality bond funds. And then with the balance, I like the dividend paying stocks. I think you're right. That makes, you know, having a value oriented uh, stock that's, you know, not as high flying on the growth, maybe a little less volatility and paying off a good, you know, base of income uh, could make a lot of sense. In terms of specific recommendations for either of those categories, Georgia, uh, our friends at soundmindinvesting.org could be a great help to you, soundmindinvesting.org, and they could give you some specific mutual fund suggestions in each of those categories for both the kind of income uh, approach to the stocks and for the bonds. Have you historically been doing this yourself and making individual stock selections, or how have you been doing it? Okay, and is that something you'd like to continue, or were you, you know, wanting to hand this off to somebody to manage it for you? So let me give you one other suggestion. I mentioned soundmindinvesting.org. The other is just to uh, find a certified kingdom advisor there in Arkansas. We've got about 1,400 of them around the country. Uh, it's the only industry designation for those financial professionals and investment advisors that have met high standards and character and competence, and they bring a biblical worldview. They would also sign a statement of faith saying that they share your values as well. So I'd interview two or three advisors, perhaps find the one that you know has a understands the approach you want to take and can really manage the portfolio that way but it would also take the pressure off of you uh, in terms of making those buy and sell decisions if that's the direction you want to go and the way you'd find some certified kingdom advisors to interview in your area georgia is just head to our website at faithfi.com that's faithfi.com and click find a cka and you can do a zip code search okay Okay, thank you so much. That's really helped me a lot. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, and all the best to you, Georgia, in this next season of life. What are you most looking forward to as you retire? I love it. I bet you are. Well, that's great. Well, listen, we appreciate you being on the program today, and uh, call anytime. God bless you. Uh, we're going to finish today in Texas. John, a first-time caller. Go ahead. Yes, I'll try to be quick. Uh, I'm 49. I'm fixing to start a job, and for the first time, it'll I'll have a job that offers 401k. I don't know much about it. Uh, just a, a hopefully a quick two-part question: Is there anything major I need to know about it? And two, I've heard there's a gold option. Uh, is, would that be better to look into? Yeah. So let's talk about 401ks, John. I mean, this is basically a, a retirement account that offers tax advantages for you to invest in it. Uh, and that's why it's so common. And that's why I would recommend that you absolutely participate in it. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is assuming they offer just the traditional version of a 401k, then it, you can only fund it through salary deferral. You can't make direct contributions, but you can say, listen, I want this amount or I want this percentage sent from my every paycheck to be diverted into the, uh, the 401k. And when that's done, you're actually not going to pay taxes on that portion that's contributed to your 401k, which is great. You get a deduction on it and then it's going to grow tax deferred. So once it gets into the 401k, then you'll pick the investments and somebody from the 401k plan administrator could help you with those selections. Uh, one of the easiest ways to go is to use one of the what they call target date funds, which basically just means that you tell them what expected well, well, retirement. Well, well, you in a target date fund with that year in it or as close to it as they can and then what's going to happen is it automatically builds the portfolio and gets more conservative as you get closer and closer to retirement so you can kind of set it and forget it to some degree now if you wanted to be more active in terms of how you build your portfolio you'd have the ability to do that but that's just one of the more simple approaches to investing and then every paycheck you would dollar cost average into the market meaning no 
matter you know what the market's doing, every paycheck you'd have the same percentage going into the 401k. It would automatically get invested into those investments. If the market's down, you get more shares. If the market's up, you get less shares. But over time, the idea is you're building a nest egg that you can use to convert into an income stream alongside Social Security when you get to retirement. If you can, I would... At the very least, I would put enough in to maximize any matching that's available by your employer. Um, but again, I would set a goal to get up to 10 to 15%. I know I've thrown a lot at you there. Does that all make sense? Yes. Uh, thank okay. you. You're welcome. So bottom line is, let's get started with the 401k. Tell them you absolutely want to participate. Let's put at least enough in every paycheck to maximize the match if they offer you a match. And let's set a goal to get up to 10 to 15% of your pay as quickly as you can. And then I'd reach out to the plan administrator and tell them you want somebody to help you select the investments inside the 401k. The simple approach is a target date fund, but if you want to be a little more hands-on, they could explain to you what other options are there and help you land on a portfolio. And then you just uh, continue to make those contributions. Over time, it'll grow. And uh, you'll be glad you've got it when you get down the road to retirement. John, thanks for calling today, my friend. We appreciate you being on the program. Well, folks, that's going to do it for us. Uh, so thankful we could cover so much ground today. Money and marriage, giving, debt, investing. Boy, uh, we, uh, I think, covered the waterfront here today. The resources God has entrusted to you. Have a great day. Come back and join us tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. 90.5 KTXG Greenville, Dallas. Camera speed. Action. American Family Studios is made up of a team of producers, directors, and writers. Austin Brooks, director of American Family Studios. The heart of what we do in American Family Studios is to support and affirm the mission of American Family Association. American Family Studios products are available at afastore.net. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. says this virtue signaling with mask mandates didn't work the first time and it won't work now. The only data that we have that's conclusive is from an organization called Cochrane, which shows that community masking makes absolutely no difference. This is a highly transmissible, contagious virus, and there's little you can do. And I don't like telling people there's not much you can do, but the reality is your choices are avoidance of people and profound social isolation, which will only temporize the, the avoidance of the virus or you try one of these many interventions that's not shown to work. And in many cases, masks have become a political badge. Meanwhile, a study published by the National Institutes of Health suggests N95 COVID masks may expose wearers to dangerous levels of toxic compounds linked to seizures and cancer. Dr. Jeanette Nashawat says, in other words, not only do masks not help, they may do more harm than good. And so when you put them on, you have these symptoms, headache, nausea. You know, sometimes you could feel um, dizzy as well or, or have trouble breathing and coughing because of the irritation.
transportation to your lungs from these toxic chemicals. And it was found that the levels of them were up to 14 times what is allowed in the U.S. So, you know, I say it's uh, always important to have good ventilation and sure. common sense. Um, and remember, you know, it, it might make it uh, where these mask mandates might be obsolete because sure. this now just gives us credence to the fact that sometimes we may be doing more harm than good. The California church is suing Santa Clara County because the county tracked its members via their cell phones during the pandemic without their knowledge or the proper warrants. Steve Jordahl reports. Calvary Christian Fellowship went to online services when the pandemic struck, going along with the 15 days to slow the spread. But quickly, they opened the church back up and went back to normal, defying mask mandates, social distancing requirements, and all the rest. Pastor Mike McClure says the county, which sits in the heart of Silicon Valley, started tracking church members using their cell phones. They knew which phones went to who and which people had uh, had COVID they had come into the church. And so they're tracking everybody walking into the church. No matter who you are, you have your cell phone on, they're tracking you. McClure's suspicion that the mandates were about more than COVID were confirmed when the county said no one was allowed to sing in church. I can't believe you can tell us not to sing when the Bible is all about singing and worshiping God. You're telling us we can't openly sing and worship God. I'm telling you, I'm absolutely not going to enforce that. They went ballistic. They will see you in court. You're done. Seeing they couldn't force the church to shut down, the county tried to bury them in fines. Social distancing, masking, if you were singing in church, if someone hugged someone else, they would write up a, a, a $5,000 fine dollars for someone to have a mask on. In all, the church racked up almost three million dollars in fines. Advocates for Faith and Freedom has filed a lawsuit against the county seeking to nullify the fines and hold the county responsible for violating the First and Fifth Amendments. I think we know now that this is spiritual. This isn't really about, you know, any kind of COVID disease. I'm Steve Jordahl. Stocks rose broadly in morning trading on Wall Street today as markets shift their attention from the Federal Reserve to more corporate and economic reports. American Family News is available online at AFN.net. And download the AFN mobile app for your Apple or Android device. I'm Rusty Peek. The world around us is constantly challenging the way we think. That's why we need a constant source of information that's based on the unchanging Word of God. I'm Jeff Shambly, and I invite you to join me for The Stand Radio, a weekly program that highlights the latest trends in culture, faith, and family. You'll hear insightful interviews with a biblical worldview application. The Stand Radio, Saturdays at 4 p.m. and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central on American Family Radio. Welcome to Today's Issues, offering a Christian response to the issues of the day. Here's your host, Tim Wildman, president of the American Family Association. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Today's Issues on the American Family Radio Network. Today's Issues, the name of this program, we thank you for listening, as always, to AFR Joining me in the studio today is Fred Jackson. Good morning, Fred. Good Monday to you. And Christopher Woodward. Hello. Chris, is it just me or are you donning some new glasses? Yes, these are my, man, I, I spared no expense on these. <laughs> I got them at the dollar twenty-five tree. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. What, what, what are, the, are those reading glasses? Is that what they are? They are reading glasses. Uh, I have reached that age do where they, my eyes are shot. And do they help? To, they do. They just it just sharpens it just a little bit. I don't need them for like driving everyday or use. Yeah, just, I, for, just for reading. It was kind of weird. Yesterday I was pulling like what I call the Chuck Schumer, where I had them on the end of my nose because I'm in church and I'm having to look down and I need these to help me read my Bible. But when I look up, the pastor's fuzzy. So it's <laughs> like I started doing one of these things. Yeah, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of fuzzy pastors out there. Yeah. <laughs> That was bad. I shouldn't say that. And if he's listening right now, he may want to have a talk to his deacon. He's, yeah, we're gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna get excommunicated. Uh, I don't think Protestant churches do that. They yeah, just, well, whatever we they, go, they just, uh, they just vote it out, kick you out. I think that's right. I think the Catholics excommunicate you. Uh, he's, uh, he's busy principaling anyway. something right now. Uh, all right, a lot to talk about today, and we appreciate you listening. You want to watch on the internet, go to Facebook, type in Today's Issues, and we live video stream there. 
and we post the stories that we discuss. Also, we have our own streaming service we encourage you to take advantage of. We promise never to cancel ourselves <laughs> so that you will always be able to watch uh, American Family Radio at streaming.afa.net. Streaming.afa.net is the uh, website. and Just go there and you can watch the show and a lot of other stuff there you can take advantage of at our streaming service, streaming.afa.net. Uh, all right, Christopher, what's first story? Well, we're watching a tropical storm by the name of Idalia. Uh, it is said to be strengthening and expected to hit Florida as a major hurricane. That's according to Fox 13, a uh, television station there in the Tampa area. Uh, tropical storm Idalia is gaining strength and is forecast to make a major hurricane uh, ahead of making landfall in Florida. As of this morning around 5 a.m. Eastern, uh, Idalia had wind speeds of 65 miles an hour. Uh, it was at 20.1 degrees longitude and 85.2 degrees latitude. Right. I, know, I, know, I know exactly where that is. <laughs> I Stop was going right there. there, Chris. Where is that, Chris? <laughs> well, basically, if you want to picture uh, the state of Florida in your mind, it's going to go over the northern half of Florida just east of the Panhandle. It's where it's tracked. Yeah, right now, if, again, you get a picture, you got Cancun, you got Cuba. It's kind of going up right in between those right now, about 90 miles west of Cuba. Yeah. And uh, they say by Wednesday, the, the Gulf waters are historically warm right. right now. That's just what a hurricane needs to just crank up. Right. And now they're saying by Wednesday morning, uh, the wind should be up to around 115 miles per hour, which makes it a Category 3 as it's coming ashore there. Right where the Florida Panhandle kind of and the peninsula, mm -hmm. they kind of meet there in that corner. Uh, it's going to hit around there north of Clearwater Beach in Tampa and then move across and uh, Jacksonville on the east coast. Uh, supposed to be in, impacted by that and then up the, the eastern coast. So... Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis over the weekend, uh, he says we're putting people in place, getting ready for this because they are very concerned in Florida that uh, the area I just described is going to be hit very hard. Now, I'm looking at the map and on the Weather Channel uh, app, I have on my phone, of what you just described, Fred, in terms of the path mm -hmm. of uh, Idalia. Is that what it is? Idalia? I've never heard of it. Like, like Vidalia without the V. Okay. All right, Idalia, and all right. So, uh, it, it, if it hits um, that, there, there, uh, there's uh, not any population bases, so to speak, uh, between probably Panama City and Clearwater mm -hmm. around that uh, what they call the Big Bend in Florida. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say you know those people who live there are not important. I'm just saying there aren't major metropolitan areas in the path of the storm uh, as it would come ashore. There's, It's basically desolate, that whole area. Yeah. But once you, if you get ashore and then you start making your path through Jacksonville or Tallahassee and up in there, there's a lot of people that live up there that will even, in South Georgia uh -huh. and even over, I don't know how far over into South Carolina. But you know what? If you live on the coast, guess what? Yep. You've had hurricanes forever, and you will have hurricanes forever. So that's just the, that's just the life that those people come to. You know, they have to live with it. So, yeah. yeah. But we certainly hope that, uh, you know, that uh, the, the damage is minimal and there's no loss of, loss of life at all. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about it is now with these, uh, you know, with the weather satellites and all the things that we have now in modern technology, uh, you can warn people and yes. people can make preparation. And I know that was what I watched part of the press conference yesterday from Governor DeSantis just telling everybody what was going on. The uh, linemen or the power company uh, workmen are being staged yep. and are getting ready to go in uh, to you know restore electricity as soon well, as right. possible. Yeah. After, you know, about because you're going to have power lines down, you're going to have you're going to have, um, you know, trees down everywhere. That's going to happen. But uh, get ready for the climate change, What's folks, and say, you know, mm -hmm. there's a hurricane now that's 
caused by climate change. When yes. We have, we've had hurricanes forever, and, and we'll have hurricanes as long as, the, as you say, Fred, the, the Gulf waters are, are warm. And now, interestingly, this hurricane uh, is not emanating from off the coast of Africa, where 90% of them do. Mm -hmm. They come off the coast of Africa, they come across the Caribbean, and then they, you know, usually strike the, one, some of the Caribbean islands, and they go either east, excuse me, they go north or they go into the Gulf, where this thing uh, is formulating uh, up really off the coast of Cancun and Cozumel, right? South of there, yeah. But now, is it already in the Atlantic? Is it already in the Gulf? Do we know? The, um, I'm looking at the one. northern sphere of it is right. in the Gulf. If you, if you look at it, uh, I, I mean, it looks pretty big right now, the way it's cranking up. That really doesn't give you a good picture. But, it, you know, it, it's coming across the Yucatan Peninsula and then up into the Gulf. Uh, so a wide area, I mean, the, what they're showing there in this picture right. kind of has it narrow, but there's going to be a wide area of rain uh, right. that stretches out well beyond right. the path we're just talking about. I have shared links to what we're talking about in the comments section of uh, today's Issues Facebook page, so go there for more on what we're Interestingly talking about. Interestingly enough, there's a lot of the uh, coastal area right now from, let's say, Louisiana all the way over to Florida that is under a drought. Yes, uh, Alice and my wife and I, we were down there last week and uh, went to the beach for a few days. And uh, the grass was yellow yeah. all along uh, Alabama, Florida, Panhandle. So mm -hmm. they, they they usually get more rain than almost anybody in the country. And yet uh, it's very, so I'm sure the rain will. Um, Some of those that. areas are going to appreciate this. Right. But yeah. nobody wants to get into <laughs> drought by a hurricane, right? No. But anyway, we will uh, watch and see what happens there. Next story, Chris. Well, you mentioned uh, how this, you know, people and politicians will blame this on climate change. Right. Uh, that is something we've heard about the Hawaii fires, and I wanted to take a moment to mention that because, as we heard from people and politicians, most of them liberals, uh, in the days uh, immediately following the Hawaii fires, we heard how it was caused by man-made climate change. Humans burning fossil fuels are to blame for Hawaii in these fires. Uh, or these fires in Hawaii. There is a, a story out today, and here's just one example. I'll share the link on our Facebook page. Um, it's now been determined by some that bare power lines and obsolete poles were the possible cause of Hawaii fires, not our use of fossil fuels. Uh, this probably won't get a lot of time and attention on CNN and MSNBC because they, like a lot of the uh, liberals, have been beating the drum saying humans are to blame for these fires. And in fact, they are but not in the way that uh, liberals wanted people to believe. Right. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, and here's what happened. You had, had these you had these old power lines that were there. We had storm system, you had a hurricane that was going across the bottom. You had a high pressure system to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. So you had a lot of wind. And then these power lines uh, that were in poor shape, apparently, uh, were brought down. They hadn't shut down the power, so there's electricity flowing through there. It hits the grass, the dry grass and the trees, and it kicks up the firestorm that we saw in that. So lawsuits are flying against the power company there in Hawaii already. And uh, But here in the, in the mainland, the United States, uh, you have the climate changers already saying it's all about climate change. This is what caused this. You're going to hear this a lot, folks. Uh, every weather system that they can, they blame on climate change. And it just adds, I was, and this is global, I was watching something this morning in Europe during the weekend. Uh, these climate change people were out spraying yachts. They say yachts, people should not own yachts. They shouldn't have private airplanes because they are heating up the environment. These climate change people, uh, they are radical in their thinking and they're out there and they're part of the Biden administration and they're, it's being used. Climate change is going to be used for more and more control of people's lives. That's the bottom line. Yeah, that's the attempt. That's what they're going, that's what they're going to want to do here. That's the agenda. Is to control, uh, especially these climate change, change, uh, climate change activists uh, who blame man for, quote, climate change. Their end goal is to control the American economy mm -hmm. and in the name of safety, yes. in the name of keeping these natural, what I call natural disasters from happening. And it, this was a natural disaster. How, with, uh, by that, I mean fire, right? Mm -hmm. 
But as you say, Chris, and what you're pointing out, Fred, the these electric poles, what they're saying in in uh, Maui, Maui, mm-hmm. and were old. They fell down, and then so you had infrastructure that was too old, should have been updated years ago, and that's been known mm-hmm. in Maui for a long time. Plus, uh, as you say, they didn't cut off cut off the power, cut so you got power. raw wires and these winds. Yes, so it was the as they say the perfect storm combination yeah. of, of factors. Yeah. All right, Chris. In other news, uh, we have this on our website, AFN.net. A new poll from the Associated Press and Nork Center for Public Affairs Research finds much of the public united in sizing up the one trait Joe Biden cannot change, his age. In a new poll, 77% said Biden is too old to be effective for four more years. Not only do 89% of Republicans say that, so do 69% of Democrats. How old is he? He's 80 years old now. Um, I looked him up the other day. I'm going to find out when his birthday is. Mm. So uh, the surprise to you, Chris, was that so many Democrats said he's too old to be president? Yeah, this is the same guy who just uh, put out videos a few months ago saying, help me finish the job. Apparently 69% of his own party doesn't want to help him do that because he's... Well, they see what we see. I mean, you know, he's... uh, you know, age is catching up with him and his will, you know, both physically. Although, he's, you know, he, other than the shuffling around and the occasional fall, which I think too much has been made of the balls. He said, what has he had? Two or three? Three or four, yeah. Three or four spills there? Well, and, I could have that in a week. You well, know and, and, and the thing is, uh, we got to be careful about this. There are folks who are 85 years old that are just fine. Oh, sure. I, I think when you're talking about Joe Biden, you're talking about a man that has now early stages of probably dementia. Mm-hmm. That's the big concern. Yeah. You know, the, the mental. Eight, the yes, it's a mental capacity. Yeah. And we have seen him in his speeches, um, you know, and, and just repeating things that everybody says, wow, where'd you get that? That's right. not true. That's what people are really concerned about. And we talked a little bit about this last week. I think there are meetings being held behind closed doors, Democrats, they are meeting and they understand they're going to look at this poll this morning and they're saying, aha, this is more evidence that Joe Biden cannot be in the top of the ticket. They've got to make a decision before Christmas. They, they really do. Yeah. And in Ed's absence today, I will say there's now three stories out there that I've seen. Uh, New York Times. You're about to go with what? You about to go with what I think you're going to go so, with? I just shared a link. You're going to suggest? <laughs> okay, go ahead. That'll leave it for me because I usually slap bed down on this one. <laughs> okay. yeah, be, In uh, Ed's absence. Okay, I'll be, I'm ready, Fred. Michelle Get Obama. It over to me. Michelle Obama. Uh-huh. Never heard of her. <laughs> Michelle Obama. Okay, what about her? Top of the ticket. Okay. All right. That's what some people say. Okay. Well, if not Joe, who? Well, okay. <laughs> uh... You know what? I've been wrong a few times, but I don't think I'm going to be wrong on this one. Michelle Obama uh, is not going to be the Democrat nominee for president because she doesn't want to be. Okay, I'm not saying she wouldn't be a better a better name presentation on the ballot than Biden, probably. Mm-hmm. Although I don't know that for sure. She has no qualifications uh, in terms of her history of certainly becoming president of the United States, but she do has, she does the name recognition, mm-hmm. and first ladies of all stripes are generally liked by the public, so I, I don't disagree with that, but man, as I've said before, Michelle Obama, she's got homes in Hawaii, and was it Martha's Vineyard? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, for tax and spend liberals... They're they're killing it in the free enterprise system. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And then she she vacations in in Europe in the in the, uh, with George Clooney. And uh, listen, she's living the high life, man. Why do you want to go back to the white? Be chained back to the White House? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't see it at all. But anyway, well, uh, if not Michelle Obama, then is you know I think Gavin Newsom wants it. Yeah. I don't think there's any question yeah. about that. I think yeah. there is this 
I think he's already cranking up his campaign in the background. Mm -hmm. But but I, I, I think, go back to where we started here, I, I think within the Democrat Party family, sure, they understand that, that Joe Biden's condition is not going to improve. And right. now, and we keep getting these polls, and this is just the latest one, folks. Keep in mind, 69%, this is an AP NORC poll, fairly credible. 77% of all Americans say he shouldn't have a second term, but 69% of the, that's 7 out of 10 Democrats. Now, wait a minute, say he shouldn't have a second term or say he's too old? They say he shouldn't have a second term because he's too old. Right. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Yes, yes. Well, uh, you got Kamala, Kamala Harris as VP. Nobody's talking about her. Oh. Why couldn't he step aside and she'd be the candidate? I'm going back to Canada, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if that woman... <laughs> no, listen. Listen, I, I agree. She's not a part of the conversation because she would be a worse candidate than Biden, probably. Yes. Uh, as far as being the top of the ticket. That's, uh, but I do agree with you. Something's going on in the background. I, I'm thinking uh, the Democrats will try to replace him. Although I don't know exactly how you do that. If in fact he wants to stay on top of the ticket, you know, you have to do an intervention, right? Yeah. The, the Democrat, yeah. uh, the Democrat big wigs, whoever they may be, would have to go in and say, look, say listen, Joe uh, and Kamala, right. Tom, Kamala, yeah. we're going to uh, replace you guys at the top of the ticket. But you know, what? I think Barack Obama, Rahm Emanuel, right. a few others, um, they said, well, his wife. Jill Biden should say, that's it. After yeah. this term's over, we're going to the house. Yes. And our beach house. Yeah. Uh, and whatever other houses Hunter's bought for us that we don't know about. Yes. That <laughs> we're going to enjoy the last, Romanian business We're going to enjoy our 80s here, and we're not going to be in the White House. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what a, a wife in this situation should I do. I looked it up. Uh, Michelle Obama is only 59 years old, and if you're living the lifestyle that she's living right now and you don't need to work anymore, I wouldn't bother. Okay, I'll tell you a scenario, and this is uh, out there, okay? And I realize that mm -hmm. what I'm about to describe is out there, but since we're... Okay, so Michelle Obama accepts what you're talking about, Fred, uh, and Ed, but he would, like, be every day saying, I told you so, and <laughs> my office is near his, so I, he would be unbearable. <laughs> but uh, huh? he would be telling me every day, I told you so. Who's, who's, who's the candidate, Tim? <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Who told you that? Uh, anyway, I, I think you might be able to draft Michelle Obama to run for president. Mm -hmm. But under the condition that once she's elected, she resigns and gives it to whoever her VP is. You see what I'm saying? In this bizarro world we live in, nothing. Why couldn't you do that? Yeah. Wow. Why couldn't you do that? You just run. You win, ostensibly. I mean, or predictably. If that, if that that would be the thinking of the Democrats, she can win. She wins, then she resigns, and then she hands it off to whoever the VP that she selected is. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm just saying that's wild and crazy. You're going to have to pay Kamala Harris, the VP, a lot of money. You're going to have to buy her off and able to uh, get her out of the way. I mean, they're going to have to say, listen, we got $20 million for you right here. Uh, Which in if, if, Biden's economy is not much. <laughs> yeah, I personally don't. She doesn't strike me as the kind of person that even wants to be president, Kamala Harris. That's just the vibe I get hearing her. I, I don't think she could handle it. Uh, and I don't think she'd be elected. But anyway, we'll see what happens there. Uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, former President Trump is 77. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, got, he's, he's, he's gonna be 78 next mm -hmm. June um, this uh, it's interesting this AP North poll which is on our website afn.net goes beyond uh, the question of the president it talks about there should be term limits for Supreme Court justices there should Who's be saying that this is the AP North poll yeah. oh the same poll you just cited about uh, about Biden being, being too old. And they're also talking about term limits uh, or age limits for lawmakers, so senators. So, so this poll, well, you'd have to change the Constitution now. That's, you know, that can be done. But uh, in terms of uh, what, 
Is it term limits on Supreme Court justices or age limits on the Supreme Court it's, justices? Uh, Retired by a certain age. Specifically, 67% of those polls favor requiring Supreme Court justices to retire by a certain age. 68% support age ceilings for candidates for House and Senate, and 66% support age ceilings for candidates for president. So there's there's an age thing going on here. I see a potential negative here. I know there are people on the, the right that are open to having a conversation about uh, age limits or...